Hi everybody, today's session topic is Chapter and Club Programming and Events. Uh, and we're doing this pandemic style just to kind of get you guys engaged with creating programs and events during these strange times that we have. Uh, but first off, I want to make sure that I say thank you. Thank you for doing, uh, during this time of uncertainty and all the craziness that's been going on with COVID virus, uh, we appreciate you and we thank all that you've done to continue uh, serving your university and showcasing Mississippi State in your local area. Um, we can't thank you enough, and I, I'll probably say thank you a thousand times more, but I, I wanna make sure that we appreciate you for finding a way to make this work with the chapters and clubs and events during the pandemic. Please keep in mind the mission of the Alumni Association, uh, and it is to foster lifelong support for all of our Bulldog family through programs and events and services on behalf of Mississippi State. And that's our general mission for the Alumni Association. Uh, the goals of the Alumni Association are a, a part of that mission. They're to foster mutually beneficial lifelong relationships by enhancing our network of alumni and friends. Uh, we try to understand and promote uh, the image of Mississippi State and the Alumni Association in a positive fashion. We wanna maintain the evolutionary uh, changes of the Alumni Association as we move forward, uh, following the vision of our board of directors and our leadership here. Um, we want to continue building on and maintaining our financial status with our university and with peer universities around us. Uh, and we want to continue to maintain our commitment to the service of not only Mississippi State, the state of Mississippi, the United States, the world. So that is the goal of our Alumni Association and your goals going forward as a volunteer. And to follow through with the goals of the Alumni Association, we do that through our programming. And the three things that we want to keep in mind as we talk about programming with the Alumni Association and our chapters clubs is we want to inform, inspire, and invest. We want our volunteers to inform, keeping our Bulldogs connected with information. We want to inspire them to do more for Mississippi State University uh, by connecting them to the university through our offices. And we want them to invest with their time, their talent, their treasure in Mississippi State and the Alumni Association. All that goes through our programming. Now, we also want to provide the Alumni Association experience, the alumni experience through programming, through inspiration, uh, a sense of belonging, as well as some memorable experiences and moments in time. So keep those things in mind as you work through the programming in your chapters and clubs. Let's look at the goals of our chapters, the goals and initiatives that our chapters that we challenge them to each and every year. We want them to, one, provide activities for our alumni and friends throughout the community. Two, we want them to be visible. We want you to showcase Mississippi State in your local area, wherever you might be. Three, we want to have community service projects that showcase the love that we have for the people around us and our community. That's a great way to inspire and showcase Mississippi State. We want to make sure we do fundraising <clears throat> for scholarships, as well as other uh, projects that the university is undertaking. And then certainly, Dr. Kim would want us to recruit students in our area. So through those five ways, we follow those goals and initiatives, and we can make our chapters, your chapters, better each and every day. So keep up with those goals. Now I'm going to let Janet Downey come forward and talk about the different types of events that you can host in your community. Thank you. So what type of events and activities can we do right now, um, especially this spring while we're still trying to promote social distancing and mostly virtual events? So we do encourage you to host your board meetings, your planning meetings, any kind of training um, virtually, whether through Zoom, WebEx, Teams, however you want to go about doing that, and our office will be more than happy to help you set those up. If you want to host a meeting with a speaker, we've done a few of those this fall. Uh, we've used Steve Robertson and Neil Price, and we've even had Dr. Wyndham, who is a an alum, but a professor at the University of Tennessee, and he has a great presentation on history of the Southeastern Conference. Um, but if that's something you wanna look into, just work with our office and we will try to find you a speaker and we can set that up through Zoom or WebEx, whatever you prefer. I know it's odd to have socials via a virtual platform, but you can do that. We've had a couple of chapters who back at Christmas, they did an ugly Christmas sweater social through Zoom. Um, they also did a night where you brought your favorite cowbell and maybe have a story to tell with your cowbell and to share that with the group. Um, 
Any kind of social or educational opportunities? Do you have someone in your local community who could speak on a topic that's relevant to your area? Could they do a demonstration or teach something? Um, say they have floral arrangements or wine tasting or some kind of expert in a particular area that they'd be willing to share with others in your, in your community uh, for your chapter. So think outside the box with those kind of events. We also offer a trivia game platform through the Alumni Association called CrowdPer, and it is a web-based platform, so you don't have to have any special app or anything. You literally just click on a browser on the link, and it opens up a browser on your phone or your tablet or your laptop, and we can set however many rounds of trivia with whatever type of questions, random questions, movie-themed questions, Mississippi State-related questions. However, we can set that up for you. We can work with that, but they are very popular and sometimes we can set up, just take 30 minutes of your time. The game is over and we can award prizes to those who win each round. So again, different things we can do in the virtual space that we encourage you to try. Now, once we're able to do some in-person events, which a few can happen right now, we just ask you to follow your local guidelines in your state whether we still have a few chapters doing some game watch gatherings for basketball. Um, we did a few for football. If there's anything you can offer outdoors, uh, whether it be a picnic or a Mississippi State Day in the park, that might be good for families. Also, if they need to get their kids outside and, and do it in a, in a safe environment where you can at least still be around other bulldogs. And coordinate with any other businesses in your area that might offer group outings, whether that be a paint party or any kind of tours. So look and see what's right there in your own backyard that might could be of use uh, to your group. Community service has really been a strong point for us during this pandemic and will always continue to be because Bulldogs offer service um, wherever we go. So. We encourage you to find ways to work in your community as a chapter. Uh, make sure that the chapter is working on it and not an individual. So within the community service parameters, just because an individual who might be a member of your board or an officer is involved with a community service project doesn't mean that's a chapter community service project. We want your, your service to be sanctioned by the chapter on behalf of the chapter and encourage other chapter members to get involved. So please don't limit it to just your chapter board or your officers, open it up to your full membership. We'll be happy to help you get the word out with that. What type of community service? Oh gosh, we've had so many different uh, worthwhile causes being done over the last many months and, and each year, but here lately, We've seen a lot of uh, meal prep or food service to our healthcare workers or our first responders. Many of you have collected uh, perishable food items for your local food pantry or food bank. We've even had some of you host blood drives, which are still very relevant. Uh, blood is always in great demand. And so if that's something you can set up for your area, uh, even if you want to make it a contest with another group, say a Ole Miss Mississippi State blood drive who can Get the most donors, you never know. Um, you can set that up through any of your blood services uh, in your state, in your community. Teacher Appreciation Week is in first week in May, so doing something for the schools or your local teachers. Um, nursing homes, right now they can't have visitors, but maybe you can do some kind of Easter coming up, do an Easter basket collection for those in nursing homes. Um, just contact your, your area and see what, uh, they might be in need of even a, a children's home and see what kind of goods they might need um, and something you may not think about just basic necessities for any kind of shelter whether that be underwear or socks uh, I believe Lowndes County did a collection for their YMCA um, for underwear and socks so there's all kinds of needs out there right now and your group can can join in and see where we, you can help out so just See what's in your community and, and get involved. Now, send off parties. Thank you all for those who were able to pivot and host virtual or drive through send off parties this past year. As always, we're very hopeful that we can do in person parties this year, but we never know. So, we have to plan for any type of occasion. But 
just to get you aware in the lines of thinking of what can be done this year. We'll start sending out student lists in May, June, and the final in July to get ready for your party. Right now, tentative dates, of course, usually start mid-late July through that uh, first week of August. We know that move-in date is scheduled for August 14th, and we're assuming that new maroon camp will be the week prior. So if you're gonna start making plans to welcome your new students, that would be fantastic. And once we send you a preliminary list in May, if you so request, you can start communicating with those students, just welcoming them and uh, looking forward to some kind of send-off party before they move to campus. Other student recruiting type events that can be done right now, of course, we're always pushing our maroon mail writing through the Alumni Recruitment Network. If you have not signed up for the Alumni Recruitment Network and want to write students who have been admitted for fall 2021, we encourage you to do that now. The web address is up there. You just go on and sign up and work with Ms. Orly Harden to send you a list of students and the note card supplies will be sent to you. You can just start writing to them. We also have a new uh, program where we're encouraging our recruiters to put yard signs in the yard to help make those in your neighborhood and your areas aware of Mississippi State and how to apply. If you would like a yard sign and you happen to become into Startwell, you can pick one up from the Hunter Henry Center or we can work with your local admissions counselor and, and they can probably figure out a way to get one to you in your area. Um, as of right now, we're not mailing them out just because of the amount that's charged for postage, but we'll work with you to figure out a way to get you a sign. And going back to that Teacher Appreciation Week, we encourage you to adopt a school or adopt a classroom. Show your appreciation not only for your Mississippi State teachers, you can highlight them on your social media accounts, but also just put Mississippi State in those schools. So if it's a teacher that may not be a Bulldog, but they're proud of Mississippi State and you provide them some kind of snack or goods, they might think even more so about Mississippi State and encourage their students to consider Mississippi State. So don't forget about our teachers. They're the ones that are really, really working hard this year to help educate our young people and uh, the amount of things they have to go through. We always appreciate them, but this would be a great time to show your appreciation. Well, good luck. So you can partner with your local animal shelter. You can do a Habitat for Humanity build. Anything like that is always um, important as well. And obviously student recruitment is always important from a university standpoint. But with the ARN network, the Alumni Recruitment Network, anybody can do that anywhere. Um, and that's a really important thing, especially for young alumni to, to participate in because they are a recent student. I mean, they are recent graduates and they can have a connection that maybe other alums cannot with um, prospective students. And Welcome to City events will be coming up this summer. Um, they will be in June this year. And that's another popular event to welcome new um, graduates to your chapter club area. So just some background knowledge of who young alumni are. So again, I say they are 35 years of age or younger. We currently have over 55,000 young alumni within our database at Mississippi State. Um, and from a generational standpoint, they're the millennial generation and the Gen Z generation. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're thinking about different things to engage um, this demographic with. Um, they value inclusion, they value networking, like I mentioned earlier. They love to network with each other to learn different things and how to really grow themselves. Um, they like social interaction, obviously in-person events when we can get there safely. And also, um, think of ways you can incorporate technology. So social media, um, Zoom platform, the WebEx platform. Technology is easy for this demographic, well most of them, but um, technology is, is a great resource to use for this demographic because they're so used to it already. Um, and millennials now are the largest generation in the United States. <clears throat> so as I mentioned earlier, they are our feature in our alumni base. So we have an ever-growing population of these new graduates, so it's important to learn how to engage them now. So a couple things to remember when you're planning and thinking about what you should do in your chapter or club to engage young, young alumni. So first, you should be welcoming of them in your chapter. You know, they're a, an invaluable resource. You know, they're not there to come and change the chapter. They're there to help out. 
they're there to provide insight into their generation that maybe you cannot um, just because you don't have the shared experiences they do. So be mindful of what they would like to see and just listen to them. Listen to, to see what they would like to see and they're the resource that can help you really change your chapter culture, really change what you can do in your chapter area. And always think outside the box when you're you know, looking to plan events, be mindful of the location, the date, and the time. That's always important for everybody, but especially young alums that just have a recent um, job, you know, they just graduated. There's still a lot of things up in the air for them. So just be thankful and, um, and mindful of what you can do um, with that. So just to follow up along uh, Michael and Janet and myself's presentation of this session, um, just remember what is valuable in terms of the event and activity for the chapter and those who attend. Think of, you know, don't just plan an event to plan it. Think of it as what, what are you gaining out, of, gaining out of it from a chapter perspective, but also what, are, what is your alumni base gaining out of it? And is it something of value to them? And did you offer them an alumni experience? So as Michael mentioned before, did you inspire them to do to take action on behalf of Mississippi State to get involved? Did you um, offer a sense of belonging, so a welcoming sense into their chapter? Um, and did you make it memorable? Did you provide an experience that they, they will remember and they will come back to your chapter to participate? So what's next? So we would like you to start brainstorming with your chapter and your chapter leadership. But again, think outside the box. COVID has taught, taught us that no matter what comes along, there's always room to pivot. There's always room to think outside the box and to really think differently about what we've done in the past and how we can improve on that. So with that being said, start making a timeline of the plans that you'd like to implement, the events that you'd like to do, and let us know about it because we can help you with university speakers, we can help you with you know, creation of different ideas, how to implement that. Um, and we can always help you schedule a, a virtual meeting, a virtual event with Zoom or WebEx. We can always help you with that. <clears throat> and just let us know what you're doing. That's, that's the most critical point of planning an event is let us know what you're doing from our side because we would love to help you promote and make your event successful. And last but not least, celebrate MSU. No matter what you're doing from planning a community service event, a alumni recruitment event, a send-off party, a young alumni event, make sure you're doing it to celebrate MSU and your community and spread the good things that we're doing here at the university. Thank you. We'll see you soon.